Hey guys, in this video, we'll see how to use FFI in Dart. What is FFI? It's a mechanism in which a program written in one language can call other program written in some other language. This concept of FFI is not new but existed in languages such as Java where they called FFI as Java Native Interface. There are things which need to be considered for FFI. So, for instance, the first is garbage collection, the second is complicated or non trivial object, and finally, if the language both or single is running on a virtual machine. In terms of Dart language, the support for FFI was announced since Dart 2.12. We were able to call the C libraries from our Dart code. This year, Dart 2.18 was announced for Objective C and Swift support. So that means our Dart code can call libraries which are written in Objective C or Swift. There are already some packages, for instance, File Picker, TFLi, Dbus, which already use this Dart FI to call existing native C APIs. There are different ways in which we can use Dart FFI. The first one is when we want to manually create the bindings. For instance, we are calling a C library and we are generating the wrapper of those C functions manually. Other way is to generate those bindings automatically using a package called as FFI Gen. We can also see from the official Dart website where they mention can be time consuming to write a Dart binding for large APIs and hence they introduce this FFI Gen which acts as a binding generator. This package is available in the pub.dev. Let's create a Dart CLI application. So for that, we copy this command, paste the command and run it. This creates a sample Dart command line application. So we can see here in the pubspec YAML comprises of some dependencies like lanes, tests. Inside the library, we have simple library. And inside the bin folder, we simply have a program which calls hello world. There are different options which we can use for create application. But by default, it goes to command line application. And the other options include like a web app, a server app and a package containing shared Dart library. Let's start by adding FFI Gen into our Dart application. So for that, we go back to the FFI Gen, we copy this command, paste it, and this adds our dependency. There are two ways in which we can specify configuration for FFI Gen. The first one is directly including in the pubspec YAML. The second one is having a custom YAML file that specifies this configuration. So we'll start with the second one. We will integrate a library called this NSURL cache, which is available in the Apple system. So what this does is, it maps the URL request for caching response objects and it also provides the memory and on-disk cache sizes. This library is available in the headers folder of our foundation framework libraries. So this library is nsurl cache which is here. So this imports a header file nsobject and does some calculations inside this. But we will import this library to be called from that. We create a config file called as url cache config yaml. In this file, we specify some property like name which would be the class which will be generated in that language which is objective c in this case because this library is in objective c output which is a binding file name which will be generated after ffi gen objective c interfaces here we specify a property called include which sets it to nsurl cache which is nothing but the file or the header of our library this objective c interface is specially a config for objective c base libraries where this include includes a specific interface which was nsurl cache in our case next is the headers property where we specify the entry points and in this case this path is basically the path in which the nsurl cache resides finally there is a property called as preamble which basically we want to reduce the warnings from the dart code so we specify these properties like ignore for file camel case type and so on and so forth let's now generate the ffi bindings so for that, we will copy this command, paste it, and this generates the bindings, which in our case is URL cache bindings .dat. So this almost 2k line file, and this comprises of all the functions written in Objective C available in the library, such as shared URL cache or cache response, whatever functions it has, it, these are all converted to that based language. Copy pasting the codes from one platform to other is something which is commonly occurred in a developer's day to day life. So let's see how we can improve this. Introducing you guys to pieces. These are the key features of pieces where it allows to save snippets from your browser and this is available in VS Code or Chrome extension one app itself. It also allows to share that snippets via some links. 
on this get pieces button it shows us the different apps it's available into so this is how the pieces app inside mac os looks like it has a editor where you can see code snippet which you just save we can search for our snippet for instance in this case i'm searching for the keyword ffi gen and it gives me the snippets related to this word the functionalities which this app offers is editing snippet and read the shareable link copy this and we can also see the summary of the snippet you can browse the snippets which you save by just clicking on any of the previous snippet for instance i click this let's see the practical use case let's say you are searching for a solution of a specific problem and you encounter a relevant snippet which you think might be useful you can click on this copy and save and it saves that snippet inside your pieces app as you can see here the snippet was saved in the app and not even this if you click on that snippet itself you can see the description which was smartly characterized by this app these options which we see here is because we have installed the pieces for chrome which is an extension available in the chrome store the other way of saving snippets is simply by highlighting the section we right click and click on pieces save selection and navigate back to the pieces app you can see the snippet was just saved we can also use this tool to generate the shareable links it copies the link open the new tab and paste that link here it's same snippet which we just saw this plugin is also available in the vs code so for instance let's say take off this highlighted snippet we can right click and either we can save to pieces or we can share to others it should now generate a snippet which is saved to pieces and also creates the link so next time instead of bookmarking the html links just try pieces let's create a file called as url cache inside this file we first import the bindings which we generated inside the main function we first specify the path to our dylib next we call the constructor of url cache library and since this constructor needs a dynamic library inside it we do so by calling dynamic library.open and specifying the path so what's this dynamic library.open this loads a library file and provides access to its symbols and this comes out of this dot ffi package there are two types of libraries which we can use with the ffi so the first one is static linking the other one is dynamic linking since in this case we are using a dynamic library that's why we are using dynamic library.open to load it into that now we have the cache library initialized we call the get shared url cache from this nsurl cache from the library's documentation we can see the shared url cache provides us this instance and that's why we call this property of this nsurl cache this property itself defines that it gets the shared url cache instance finally we call the property like current disk usage memory usage disk capacity and memory capacity from this url cache and these properties are also defined in this library for instance current disk usage disk capacity current memory usage and memory capacity let's run this code now so we call the function dash run and specify the file name so we see the output as current disk usage as something disk capacity memory capacity as something the second way is using the configuration inside the popspec yaml so here inside the dev dependency inside the ffi gen we specify the library which we want to generate bindings for so in our case it's the time zone library for generating the binding we just call this terminal command which says start run and ffi gen this generates the bindings for the time zone library for using these binding we create a new dot file called as time zone store inside this we import the time zone bindings file in the main function we specify the path to the dylib next we call the time zone library constructor which takes in the dynamic library once this library is initialized we call the get local time zone from the ns time zone this local time zone is an object that tracks the current system time zone finally we print the time zone name and also the offset from the gmt in which this system is let's run this file using the dart run and specifying the name so we get here the time zone as asia and offset it from GM as 8 hours. For testing FFI gen, we install two libraries. So first is logging and the second is YAML. This logging package is simply used for logging the records on different levels. So for instance, we have VR, warning, info and whatnot. The YAML package is used for parsing the YAML file inside our data application. So in this case, it would be pubspec YAML. We create a file called as FFI218 underscore test. So firstly, we set up the log warnings level in our case 
case, we set the level to severe. We write test inside our file. We create a file object using the URL cache config YAML. This is the URL cache config YAML and we create the file out of this. Next, we call the load YAML function which comes from the package YAML. This function takes in a string parameter. So the file object which we created in the previous step, we convert it as read as string. So what this does is it synchronously reads the entire file contents in form of a string. The return type of this function is dynamic. So that's why we specify the output to be YAML map. Next, we call the config object from the YAML and we pass in the parameter as the pubspec YAML. This from YAML function, what it does is creates a config from the YAML map. Next, we call the parse function which takes in the config and generate the bindings based on the config. The bindings generated are in the form of a string. Since the output is a string, we use the contains property to search for keywords accordingly. Let's run our test using that test and specifying the file name. We can see here the test were passed. In this test, we don't use the existing URL cache bindings, but instead we generate the binding file on demand. So we can see by adding a print statement here. So in this case, I'm specifying to print the output, which is the generated config. If I run the test again, we would see the binding file, which was generated and it's printed here. So this expectation is compared against this generated library inside our test.